The half and half combines elements of two of the most well-known fly patterns in existence, Lefty Cray's Deceiver and Bob Clouser's Clouser Minnow. It's a favorite of saltwater fly fishermen worldwide. On this half and half, I'm going to start with a pretty standard size 2 watt saltwater hook. Begin by getting the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. For thread, white 140 denier is a good choice. Use a jam wrap to get your thread started on the hook shank behind the eye and take a few more wraps rearward before snipping off the tag. For this size hook, large quarter inch diameter painted dumbbell eyes work well. I like to use the eyes for measurement, so I go one dumbbell length back from the back edge of the hook eye and mark that spot with the thumbnail of my left hand. Then take wraps of tying thread to that location. This will be the tie-in point for the dumbbell eyes. Measuring in this manner really helps with consistency between flies. Take a few cross wraps to get the eyes lightly secured to the hook shank. When you're happy with their position, take a few wraps around just the shank, then start making wraps over top of the dumbbell eyes, but under the hook shank. You want to kind of do a tug of war back and forth as you go. Follow these wraps with two or three more turns around just the shank. Then, start taking circular wraps beneath the dumbbell eyes, but over top of the hook. These wraps draw the previous wraps tight together to fortify the connection between eyes and hook. End with two or three tight turns around just the hook shank and make sure the eyes are correctly aligned perpendicular to the hook. Although not essential, I like to snip a small clump of white bucktail free from the hide, then position it on top of the hook shank so it extends about a shank length past the hook bend. I'll then snip the bucktail off at the location of the eyes. Give your bobbin a good counterclockwise spin so the thread jumps rearward to catch the butt ends. Then bind the bucktail to the shank all the way back to the start of the bend. Just a small amount of bucktail creates a larger, flatter surface, making it far easier to tie in the deceiver style tail. I'm a huge fan of olive and white half and halves, so I select four similar sized and shaped dark olive saddle hackles from a strung clump. To prep the feathers, Strip all the fuzzy stuff off the lower part of the stem so you're left with feathers that look about like this. Take two and lay them together with both of their shiny sides facing you. Ideally, the feathers should be about two full hook lengths long. Lay the feathers against the near side of the hook at a diagonal and catch the stems with your tying thread. Take two or three turns to loosely hold the hackles in that position then carefully pull on the bare stems to draw just the first couple of hackle fibers beneath the thread wraps. This will orient the feathers in the correct vertical position. This position, however, is rather tenuous and a single wrap of tying thread could throw everything out of whack. To prevent this, I like to apply just the smallest amount of UV cure resin to the intersection of the feathers and the thread wraps. After application, the resin should be allowed to sink in a bit. Once UV light is applied and the resin cured, the saddle hackles will be locked into the desired orientation and you can simply snip the excess stems off close without worry. Subsequent thread wraps shouldn't disturb the hackles in the least. Now, repeat the same procedure with the remaining two saddle hackles on the far side of the hook. A rotary vise really comes in handy for doing this. Again. Pull just the first few fibers under the thread wraps to get the feathers oriented correctly. Then, give the intersection a light coat of UV resin and a healthy shot with the UV torch. Here too, the feathers should be basically locked into place. Get the hook reoriented back to its normal position, then advance your tying thread forward to just behind the dumbbell eyes. Six to eight strands of gold crystal flash are used to add a little bit of shimmer and shine to the pattern. Measure so the strands extend about halfway down the saddle hackle tail. Bind the flash to the top of the hook shank behind the eyes and snip the excess off close. Holding three or four strands on the near side of the hook, start taking thread wraps to bind them down. Then push the remaining three or four strands over to the far side of the hook. Take thread wraps rearward all the way to the base of the tail. 
The idea is to have an equal number of strands on either side of the tail. Advance your tying thread forward to immediately in front of the dumbbell eyes. Some people will cover the area between the eyes and the base of the tail with diamond braid or a similar material, but I've never really found it to be necessary. Go back to your white bucktail and this time clip a fair sized clump from up near the tip of the tail. I like to keep my half and halves very sparse, so snip a relatively small clump. While holding the tips in your left hand, strip out the shorter hairs from the butts with your right. With the bucktail in the fingertips of your right hand, measure so the hair extends to about the same length as the crystal flash, in other words, halfway down the tail. Regrip the hair in the fingertips of your left hand above the dumbbell eyes. Then, using the back edge of the hook eye as a guide, snip the hair off square. With the hair pointing down at about a 45 degree angle, push the top edge of the clump down to the back edge of the hook eye. Start taking wraps with your tying thread to anchor the material to the hook shank. Ideally, it should gently taper down to the hook without your thread kind of dropping off a cliff. Keep taking wraps with your tying thread, first to in front of the dumbbell eyes, then underneath them and over top of the bucktail behind them. Take three or four nice tight wraps right there, then begin making open spiral wraps down the shank, all the way to the base of the tail. Then, wrap back up to the eyes in a crisscross manner. At this point, the fly should look something like this. Although certainly optional, I like to take just a small pinch of bright red dubbing and use it to create a thin dubbing noodle on my tying thread. A few wraps with the noodle to build up a short dub collar behind the eyes I think adds to the realism of the pattern as it kind of looks like gills or a little bit of blood as on a wounded bait fish. Position your tying thread immediately in front of the dumbbell eyes, then once again turn the hook upside down. If you like, now's a good time to apply an ample drop of UV Cure resin to all those thread wraps beneath the eyes. A healthy shot of UV light will further lock the dumbbell eyes to the hook shank. Now select a clump of olive bucktail, similar in size to the last white clump. As before, snip the hair free from the hide, strip out the short hairs from the butts, and measure so the tips extend about halfway down the tail. Snip the butts off square, Lay them against the hook shank at a 45 degree angle with the top edge at the back of the hook eye, then take thread wraps to bind them down. Again, you're looking for a gentle taper down to the hook shank. How much you want to build up the head of the fly with thread wraps is really a matter of personal preference. I prefer a head that's fairly slim, about like this. When you're happy with the shape, do a 5 or 6 turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip or cut your tying thread free. Get the olive bucktail split equally on either side of the hook, then reorient the fly back into its normal position. Applying a thin coat of UV Cure resin to the bucktail over top of the dumbbell eyes and to the thread wraps at the head of the fly ensures the wraps won't come unraveled, the bucktail won't pull out, and the fly might just last for more than one or two bluefish. And that's the half and half. They ride with the hook point up and have the jiggy motion of a clouser, but also have the longer body and tail movement of a lefty's deceiver. It's an all-around fabulous fly. <laughs>